Welcome to this tutorial series on Train Supply Manager or TSM. We're up to episode number six. This one is focused on ordering multiple resources to a single request to stop. And I have already half built most of option uh, or the first option for doing this in a actual a different factory to the one we've been running around in. This is a um, existing uh, mega uh, mega base. So um, it actually does need and has a working requirement for um, a uh, make everything factory. And this is a typical make everything stop where you are uh, needing to have a, an ability to load up lots of different resources. I'm doing it in this factory via uh, passive, uh, sorry, active, active supply chest so that resources can load up in here, uh, be unloaded and then move to supply so there's room for another resource to come in. Um, coming into the make everything, I have a stacker just in case there's multiple resources being requested at the same time, which we are going to make sure this can do. Okay, enough of the preamble. What exactly are we doing? Well, we're running a signal wire from a uh, robo port, as that's one way to ensure all of the current uh, balances of signals are picked up. However, we're not interested in everything. Um, the actual building and supplying of material is controlled elsewhere. What we're interested in is simply the input of raw material. So what I do here is I run it into a constant combinator with negative values for all the resources we want. So that in other words, if these levels of the raw resources drop below the value I set in here, and it can be different for all of them. For, uh, for argument's sake, I've just made them all 8,000 here. So minus 8,000. As soon as the actual amount we have on hand drops below 8,000, um, there'll be a net negative on the green signal. And as a consequence of that, this signal is then mapped to the back of all of these and to the back of all of these. Whichever one it is, we will get a virtual signal, P for iron ore, Q for copper ore, and it's a different one for each ore deliberately because that means we can just run the wire across all of them and we have a different virtual signal um, mapping each of our ore requirements or circuit requirements, whatever the case may be. So. Then we have a normal requester station. We've put all these lamps within legal distance. They have to be within uh, two of these tiles of the requester. It will tell you if you try and put them further away, like over here. Requester needs to be within two tiles, so that one's useless. It won't do anything. Um, and then it's a simple matter of saying, okay, um, there's, there's actually two things we can do here. So we could use the trains on the way signal that you're used to, the trains on the way signal is less than P. This works. However, I did say that we were going to guarantee that you would have um, more than one train able to be sent here at once if there was more than one resource shortage at the same time. If you use the trains on the way here, that won't happen. You'll get one train and then all of the signals that are looking for trains on the way will know that there's a train on the way irrespective of what the resource is actually being um, resupplied and that's all the trains you'll get. So instead of that, if you notice um, with these signals, when a train is sent, it sends a train on the way and it also sends a signal for the number of trains of that particular resource as per the resource you've specified here, the resource ID you've specified here. So if you were looking for iron plate, for example, we have all of these options for iron plate. And um, as a consequence, um, it knows that it's iron plate. And this will have trains on the way one, iron plate one, as the signal coming from the uh, train counter item. So instead of trains on the way is less than P, if we made this iron plate is less than P, now it's not going to pick up anything from here because this signal goes to the back of the combinator and it's only to the back of the combinator and ends. Then there's a fresh one that picks up from the front of the combinators that will only pick up the numeric, the, sorry, the alpha virtual signal that we have assigned it, which is why we give them virtual signals. So iron plate is less than P, send a train. We do the same for um, copper plate. Copper is less than Q though this time because it's a different signal that we're using and in fact it's just called one according to the schema 
Um, we keep on going in this way, so we now get stone is less than PQR. Um, the next one is stone brick. Stone brick is less than S. Um, let's do this one here. So green circuits is less than T. And red circuits is less than U. Um, and we're almost done. Um, steel is less than TU. B. And finally, iron ore is less than W. There is one of our trains, just to prove that it works. That's our copper train that we were expecting. Here it is, nice and fresh, beautiful. Let's send it away, because um, we don't actually need to unload it. This is one way, this is perfectly acceptable. You could use trains on the way, but you'll only get one at a time. To be honest, at a make everything, even a reasonably busy one, you don't often need lots of trains at once, so one train at a time is probably okay. But I prefer to use this because the signal is represented in the train counter. Okay, that's one way. How about if I told you there is a much simpler way of doing this that requires one combinator only. Just that. Sorry, one um, one decider combinator and one arithmetic combinator. So two combinators, I lied slightly. What you need to do for this method, method number two. This is, called, this is what I call direct circuit connection. You need to, again, feed to the back of the combinator. The combinator is going to do something simple, but you basically you're, you want to know um, if you want to do it for each of the items. If any of these items is less than zero, then we want a value one only, and we want it being the item that we selected. So that's what that uh, does. So in other words, if it happened to be copper, um, plate like we actually ordered just before, then um, it would be copper plate ends up being less than zero, it would output one copper plate. Right, that's the first combinator. So that will give us a one copper. We need to make this into a negative value. You'll understand why very shortly. So all of this, all this is doing is taking anything in, it's multiplying it by minus one, so that our one becomes a minus one and it's outputting the same as what comes in. So in this case, it would have been um, copper plate was below 8,000. So it was negative, say 5,000. This would have said, oh, minus 5,000 copper plate, that becomes one positive copper plate. We're now multiplying one positive copper plate by minus one. So we have one negative copper plate. Okay. Now what we do is we again include the train counter and we wire this directly to the station. That's it. We now have a working make everything station that will order for all eight of these resources as long as for each of those resources you have, I'll show you in a second, you have, so for iron plate, you have a resource iron plate ID iron plate priority, because this is the one that gets selected. And this is the major weakness of such a simple system, is that it needs this and can only call from this one. So you lose the ability to have uh, your prioritizations um, across uh, to different supply stops based on where they are, because your station that is using this technique is always calling from the double icon, the resource being the same as it and the ID being the same as it. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, green circuits, perhaps. So it's calling these ones. Um, but it works. Now, how do we, what's low? <laughs> what's low now so that we can force something to get called? Um, nothing appears to be particularly low. Maybe we can uh, get copper to be called if I was to come out here. 
drop off my belongings. And grab the copper out of these. Uh, how much copper do we have now? Oh, we still have 5,000. Okay. Uh, let's find some more copper. They tend to get stored. Oh, it's, no, 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 no. Thank you. <laughs> Off. Um, they tend to get stored in a uh, separate chest, so it's relatively easy to find. Um, have we triggered it yet? Um, yes. And this is why it works, because the, the negative copper gets balanced by a positive one copper from here. You can see it's positive one if you look over. To the right hand side of the screen underneath the mini map, the train counter output signals one train on the way, one copper on the way. This is outputting a negative one. This balances it, makes it zero. So only one train gets called and um, it's stuck somewhere, but it will get to us soon. Which one is actually coming to us? This one's coming to us. It's just down here, but um, it's gonna have a it's gonna have to do a bit of a loop on this map to get to me, but it is on the way. So this works perfectly fine. Now, just before we finish up, you can actually modify this and include requesters as well. For example, let me just dump off this iron that I don't want, oh, sorry, iron, this um, orangey iron thing, <laughs> which is not iron at all. Um, grab up my usual inventory. So there's the copper train. Um, if you want, what you can do is put down a requester. And if you remember, say, for example, the iron plate ordering that we had, had uh, this one here. If we look more closely at this, what it actually does is it has an inactivity on it. And maybe I don't want the inactivity and maybe I wanna have a different order of the iron that's coming. So I'm using this one that has no inactivity, iron plate one, that's the one I want to use, but I don't want to have to do everything as requesters. Well, you're in luck, you can do this too. What you do is you simply wire it up as per usual. Um, you tell it that if, um, in this case, iron plate is less than zero, because it will be, because this would generate a negative of whatever resource you're after, so iron plate can be set to being less than zero, then this will activate, and then you've got the priority schema, we can set that to iron plate, we can set it to iron plate one, and it uses requesters and priorities from these requesters in priority in total to this direct circuit connection. So if an iron plate request is made, this will get served first, If it's possible for this to answer the request. The request will be answered by this. Then it will already have wiped out the imbalance, the negative one iron plate, because this will create an iron plate on the way here as well. And um, there'll be nothing being sent to the station. So there'll be no direct circuit request triggered. So you can do this amalgam if you see fit. And guys, really that's all I want to say about um, multi requests i do use them quite a lot especially on this map this is basically a train map uh, you can come to a station like this one for example where i'm using three requesters because that suits my purposes better um, i do use uh, the direct circuit requests for things other than me's as well uh, not so much in this map but i do do that um, it's up to you this just gives you a flexible and tidier way of doing things Thanks for joining me guys, there's more tutorials coming. Bye bye for now.